66 positive cases of COVID-19. About 75% are recovered. 36 of those cases are still active. County health leaders again answered questions today. We have, 100, have 166 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Knox County. 126 of those have recovered. 20 individuals have been hospitalized at some point during their illness. And we thankfully are able to say we, no, we do not have another death from COVID-19. We want to take we, we want to take this time to offer a quick clarification about the differences between the numbers we report and the numbers on the state's website. There, there can be discrepancy for a few discrepancies for a few reasons. First, we post our numbers at 11 a.m. So that means we pull that, that data out earlier in the day than they do because they don't post it until 3 p.m. Central time, which is actually 4 p.m. here. Or is it anyway? It's, it's 3 p.m. 3 p.m. here, sorry. Um, so lab results are received through the day. So there may be some labs that come into the State Department of Health that weren't in at 11 a.m. when we pulled our data. Also, all of the data is put into um, the uh, statewide system for the local jurisdictions then to go in and do their investigations. And sometimes through that investigation, you might find that there's duplication and we, we, we clean that up. So the numbers that we put out at 11 o'clock in the morning are the most accurate numbers for Knox County related to COVID-19. Additionally, on Friday, we added a map to our website that shows positive cases by zip codes. This map is meant to provide a general geographic overview of positive cases in Knox County and does not account for populations. We also added a chart for race and ethnicity data. However, because numbers are still low in these populations, it is not scientifically appropriate to draw conclusions from this data at this time. It's important to remember that, un that unfortunately, access to care was an issue before the, this pandemic and it remains an issue today. This is one reason we've expanded our testing to help cover those folks who don't have insurance so that they can have access to testing. And we're looking at other places where we might offer testing throughout the community. So I'm not sure what the governor is gonna decide, um, and I've been, been in conversation with Mayor Jacobs, and we plan to wait to see what the, the governor announces and have talked about what we will do if he does not extend the order. Um, we agree that we're not quite ready to come out of uh, the restrictions on travel and social distancing at this time. You see, when we look at the, the map, the maps, um, we do see concentrations in certain zip codes. Um, and so what, what we can infer from that is that there are definitely confirmed cases in those zip codes. Um, what we don't know is testing availability throughout the county and in other zip codes. So it's a reflection of disease, but is it also potentially a reflection of access to testing? Um, something we are trying to address and we are encouraging providers throughout the county to make testing available to their patients so that we can better understand the burden of disease throughout the whole county. The most important number we look at is the number of positive cases. Recoveries are really encouraging. We're really thrilled that people are getting better. Um, but for us working right now, where we are in the traje trajectory of this outbreak is that we're looking at positives because looking at the positives enables us to isolate that person that we know is sick, protect the people that are at risk that might have come in contact to them, which also protects the larger communities. What we need to see is we need to see cases going down and not going down just for a couple of days, but a trend of cases going down as opposed to continuing to go, go up, which is where we are now. So where are, we, where are we on the curve? That's easy, we're at the beginning. Um, we're still on the upslope of the curve. Um, successfully flattening the curve will mean that our cases start to, we see a slowdown in the number of new cases um, is, when, is when we know we're flattening the curve. But we need to see that for several days. One day of fewer cases does not mean we flatten the curve at all. Um, and honestly, what the, one of the challenges with this, this approach is that flattening the curve might actually mean we have people who are sick a little bit longer than we would if we go whoop, real fast, up real fast, and have a really fast peak. But the challenge of the fast peak is, one, more people get sick, more people die. We, we uh, totally overburden our uh, medical system, and the economic impact is greater. So we don't want that to happen. 
Um, so we want to have that flatter curve. Um, so we want to keep these things in place. We know they're working. We know evidence tells us and history tells us that social distancing works to reduce illness. Perspective tonight from Dr. Martha Buchanan with the Knox County Health Department. You can hear even more at our website, WBIR.com, or through our app right now.